Hi guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today, I'll be showing you how I build this dulcimer from a kit. I became aware of this dulcimer kit from watching a YouTube channel, Banjo Lemonade, and I'll leave the link here uh, to her, her channel. And, uh, and I saw that these uh, kits were produced by Backyard Music in uh, Will Willimantic, Connecticut. And so I contacted Dave there to say, hey, um, why don't you send me one of these so that I can build it, um, show people how it's built, and then give this away. And that's what I'll be doing. So um, uh, go ahead and watch this video to see how I put this together. Um, and you'll get to hear more about how uh, this is going to be given away. So uh, enjoy the video. Okay, so I'm getting ready to begin putting this dulcimer kit together. I have all the things that I need here. Of course, I've got the kit itself, which includes the neck, uh, the box, the tuning pegs, and other things in that bag. Also, the instructions. The instructions say that we're going to need some kind of sandpaper, so I have a little sanding sponge there, 120 grit. I also have some painter's tape to tape off the parts of the box that I don't want to have spray painted. Um, I have glue for gluing the box together once it's kind of folded up. Um, I have spray paint. Uh, I'm going to be spraying this yellow. It also calls for a small screwdriver, and that's for screwing in the screws for the, uh, the tuning pegs. And also a hammer, and that's for tapping the brads into the underside of the, of the kit um, to put the string, attach the strings to. Oh, and we have a visitor. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is to prep this box for painting. Uh, the instructions suggest that this be painted prior uh, to folding up and gluing it together. So to do that, I have to make sure that um, I don't paint over the part of the box where this uh, neck is going to be going. And that's because uh, the glue won't take as well there. So what I did was I measured the width of the neck. And the width of the neck looks like it's about uh, 35 uh, millimeters wide, or three and a half centimeters. And so that's how much space I want to have here that I tape off uh, so that it won't get painted for where this is going to glue down. Also, all these outside surfaces I can paint, but the inside surfaces that are gonna be glued, I'm gonna be uh, taping those off with tape uh, to make sure I uh, I, uh, I don't paint them so that they will glue together well. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and get my painter's taper out here and, uh, and start taping it down. Okay, you can see that I've used this uh, painter's tape to tape off that part of the box that I don't want to have spray painted so that glue will stick to it better. I did the same thing for the flaps here. Um, the instructions did not explicitly call for that. Uh, but I did it anyway just to make sure that I'm going to get a good bond from the glue. Also, you can see that I already punched out the little holes here. And if you wanted to carve in your own shapes, I suppose you could do that as well if you want additional sound holes too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try and spray this. It's a windy day out here. I come out to the outside where I'm not spraying this yellow paint on anything important. So let's see how this goes. Figures. I kick a stick and knock uh, dirt and stuff all over this. Let it dry, try to clean it off a bit, and then spray a second coat.
Okay, so uh, the other side is dried, and we'll go ahead and do the face of it. This side here, I want to make sure I do a better job and don't get any stuff on it, because this is going to be the side that's going to be visible. Hopefully the bugs and stuff will stay out of it when I'm painting. Wind change. So what you can see here is I have uh, put some painter's tape and taped this box to uh, my counter just so I can let it uh, hang and finish drying. And I'll probably let this set for oh, a couple days or so to let that, that paint fully cure before coming back and uh, gluing it all together. Okay, so I spray painted the box. It's drying. I had some issues. Lesson learned, don't do that in the wind. But let's go ahead and proceed to the neck. The next step in the process is to repair the neck. A uh, few things we have to do here. One is take either sandpaper or a sanding sponge. If you take sandpaper, it's ideal if you like wrap it around a block of wood. And what you want to do is with the fretboard, come along the fretboard at like a 45 degree angle or so, uh, mostly to make sure you're smoothing the fret edges. These here are actually quite smooth. And all you basically do is just put it at that angle and just go up and down the fretboard to make sure there are no sharp edges from the frets. Right. And that's about it. The next thing you want to do is to uh, prepare this uh, for your staining. I'm going to be using linseed oil, uh, boiled linseed oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sand the sides uh, the back as well, although I'm going to be gluing this later on. I'm not going to be applying linseed oil here or it won't glue to the box. But I'm not going to do that in here. I'm going to go outside and sand that uh, in preparation for staining or linseed oil rather. The other thing to do is to, after that's done and after I put the linseed oil on, we're going to be uh, nailing in these brads or little nails. And this is going to be going on the bottom. Um, uh, and this is where the loops of the strings are going to go. Now it's important, let's pretend this is the nail for a moment. Don't put them in straight and po don't put them in where the heads are pointing toward the end of the stick. Otherwise the tension of the strings will pull them out. So it's important that when you put these in, you angle the head of the nail toward the headstock. That way as the strings pull, they pull the brads like into the wood, not out of the wood. Um, to know where to put this, um, what I did was I took the uh, string spacer here and I just, uh, uh, and again, this is the, the string spacer that goes in the, in the stick, I'm gonna start the stick. It actually goes in uh, uh, right here. But I just laid it down here so I could uh, see where to put those brads in. And then I just took my pencil, I marked a spot. 
Uh, then you can just take the brad and you just kind of put it at that spot, kind of push down a bit. You can angle it and just tap it in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pre-drill it. First, I'm going to go ahead and do a light tap to kind of get it started. All right, and this one here. All right, I'm going to use a drill. I'm not going to drill very far or very deep. Uh, and, when, and if you do decide to do this, again, the instructions don't require it, but this is hard wood. It'll make it easier to tap it in. Um, you only want to maybe do maybe, uh, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch just to kind of get this started. And so what I've done is I've taped off the drill bit here to make sure I don't go any deeper. I think I have maybe between an eighth and a quarter there. Um, and also make sure that whatever drill bit you use is not wider than the actual brad is. You can see here, this one here is actually just about the same size. So to start this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my setting here um, on reverse. And so I'm not uh, trying to drill down into the wood. It's just going in reverse to kind of get it started there. And then the same thing on the other side. And again, I pre-tap these with that brad. Again, this is not a required step. This is something I'm going to do to kind of make my life a little easier here. And again, I have the angle I want. Okay, so that was going with the drill bit in reverse. Now I'm going to put it going forward and again, have it nice and slow. And I'm only going down to where that tape stops. Again, this is not a required step. It's just something I'm doing to, uh, to kind of get me started there. So now I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to go ahead and sand it down with the sanding sponge. So we have the, the neck of the dulcimer right here. Again, you can see that I've taped off the back so that it would not pick up any um, of the oil from when we put the linseed oil on. To um, sand the edges, and I should say that um, this neck was, had, was very smooth, did not have sharp edges at all. Um, in the instructions, they suggest you use 120 uh, grit uh, sandpaper. In this case, I'm using a sponging block, it's 120 grit. And to, uh, to address those edges, or those uh, the fret edges, you just take this block at a 45 degree angle relative to uh, the fretboard. So here's the fretboard, so we have a 45 degree angle from that. You basically just run this up and down the edges of this, 45 degrees, if you want to, you can roll it a little bit side to side uh, to just get those edges of the frets smooth. Okay. Then you'll just take this and you'll sand everything except um, um, this back here. And actually you can sand this and then tape it off. But you, if you do, you wanna tape this off prior to, to uh, staining it. You can see here I have linseed oil that I've put in this little jar. And this is what I'm gonna be using to uh, 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 treat the uh, fretboard with. I've just taken uh, a paper towel and I'm just going to fold it up here so that I can get linseed oil on it. And then to apply it, you just wipe it on. You can leave it for a bit, let it soak in, and then come back and wipe it back off. The nice thing about linseed oil is it's not a stain, um, it won't really change the color too much although it does um, tend to darken the wood just a little bit, particularly over time. I've done some other necks that were uh, a poplar neck, and they were essentially, and the poplar was essentially a white wood. After a year, it's sort of yellowed a little bit, so it's a little more amber now. But again, basically you just wipe it on and wipe it back off. Now the end grain on these tends to be quite thirsty. So uh, make sure you check that end grain to make sure it soaks in all that it wants to. When you put the linseed oil on, basically you wanna just wipe it on, leave it for a few minutes, let it soak in, and come back and then wipe it back off. Again, if you find that the, it raises the grain, then you could come back and lightly sand it with a uh, a high grit sandpaper and then do it again. Some folks will do this a few times.
but basically it just provides a, 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 a light finish to this and just helps uh, treat the wood. So that's pretty straightforward. All right, so I'm now ready to go ahead and assemble uh, the dulcimer. I have prepared the neck. It's all been sanded and I've put a couple coats of the linseed oil on it to prepare it. I'll go ahead and remove the masking tape from the back so that it can be glued up. And you should be able to see a difference in color at the fretboard between where it was oiled and where it was not. Okay, you can see it's darker here and then where it was not oiled, it's a lighter color. So that's important so that uh, the glue can stick to the, the, the board and also to the box. Other things I have here to get ready, I have rubber bands for holding the box together as I glue it together so it won't come apart. I have some masking tape in case I need to tape the lid of the box together to hold it in place. And I have some balloons here. They said sometimes uh, the box will sag in the middle and so you can take the balloons, put them through the sound through the sound holes in the box and inflate the balloon to press up against the box. So I have that if I need it. And the other thing I have here is, is white glue. They said uh, don't use like the yellow woodworkers glue like type bond. Use regular uh, Elmer's uh, glue all white glue. So I have that. So let's go ahead and uh, get this box ready now. You can see that um, I have the box here painted all front and back. And it turned out okay. It has a bit of a of like a dimpled appearance to it. I'm not sure if you can see that there in the light. Uh, but I don't think that will be a problem overall. You can see also here that I had uh, taped the areas that I want to have clean to take glue. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove that tape now. Okay, I was a little concerned that the tape might actually peel off some of the cardboard. And it has a little bit, but not too bad. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll finish taking all the tape off, um, off camera, and then come back and we'll start to assemble this. You can see here that I have uh, sort of put this together, but it's only been dry fitted. I've not tried to actually glue this. And I certainly suggest you do that to make sure you figure out <laughs> how it should be folded and, uh, and where all your glue should go. I'll go ahead and take this apart and kind of show you how I folded this up. One of the things they recommend in the directions is that you have uh, something heavy to uh, place on the fretboard to hold it down. You can see the box wants to kind of open up. And so if I just kind of put it together like this, um, it's not going to stay there. And so it wants to open back up. So that's what the rubber bands are for. You can see here from the box that I have taken the tape off uh, that I had put on there so that I'll have a good glue service. So that means that all this exposed cardboard area is going to be able to take glue well and should help keep the fretboard glued in place. You can also see that here on the ends of the box, I put tape on uh, so that uh, those could glue up as well. So basically I'm going to be putting glue on some of these surfaces here so they'll hold inside. But basically this is going to be glued to the underside of this. That's going to, what's going to be holding this down. And the same thing on the other end here. Let me show that again. So here, here you can see where I put the tape and took it off. That's going to be holding the glue that I put this together with. And on the other end, it's the same thing. You can see I, uh, I put uh, the tape here so that when this is glued, that will stick to the underside of the box. What I didn't do, and I probably should have, was I did not put tape on the underside of the box here for it to be contacting there. I guess I, I missed that when I was putting the tape on. So I'm hoping that that will um, still um, stick to that paint all right, so uh, time will tell. The other thing, like I said, is I have lots of rubber bands here so that once I, uh, I put this together, glue it up, I'll put rubber bands on to hold it all together. Um, and then I have some uh, gallons of water that I'll be setting on the fretboard to help keep that, that all down. <clears throat> so uh, other thing to keep in mind is the placement 
of the neck. When you place the neck on, basically you want to have the string spacer basically down here at the end of the box. And at the other end of the box, you want to have where the, uh, the saddle is going to be. Um, also keep in mind that on the underside, this is where those uh, brads are for the strings, which is why I have to make sure it's off the end of the box. You can't put it on the box. So basically this box is the dimensions that are just right so that the string spacer is on one end of the box and the saddle is on the other of the box. And also keep in mind that I, when I put that uh, tape on, I made sure that um, um, uh, the wood, the raw wood, would be going to where it's going to be glued. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, now that I've dry fitted this, uh, I can put it together. But I'll just show you how basically this thing does fold together. Basically, these two tabs here will fold in like so. And then this end flap just folds over it like that. At first, I thought this thing was supposed to fold down, but it isn't. It just folds under it. And so it will glue to the top of the box like that. And the under end of the box is the same way. These two end pieces will fold together. And then this end piece folds over it like that. There you go. So that's basically it. And then, of course, the fretboard goes on that. And then rubber bands go over the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try this with the glue and, <laughs> and see if I can do this without making too big of a mess. Okay, so I've got the box uh, just kind of held together so I can put my last glue on, then I'll put the fretboard on, and then I'll weight it down to hold it all together. One thing I am going to do here to help hold this together is I'm going to put a couple of pieces of tape on here, and I'm just going to tape right over them.
Okay, so I have this centered over the box. I have the string spacer at the end of the box. I'm going to go ahead and put the weight on here. Or actually, no, I'm going to put the rubber bands on here first. And then I'll take the end ones off. It might be out of frame for a moment here as I put some rubber bands on. There's one. There's another one. Okay, so we get that centered. Put some more of those on. Funny is I'm putting these on. You can hear how resonant that box is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this back in frame here. As you can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is squeezed on tight there. I'm gonna pull this rubber band off that was holding the end together. All right, make sure that's good and tight. And the other end, we'll do the same thing. Get the glue off our band. And we'll get that end piece set in there. Pull that rubber band off. Clean this up. Okay, got the rubber band clean. Put that on. Put that right at the end. Let me double check this, make sure this thing is centered and in the right position. And it looks like it is. The other thing you can do here now, once you know it's all centered and has uh, all our bands on it needs to hold it tight, is you can come back and you can uh, do a little glue cleanup. And for glue cleanup, basically, you can just wipe it up here. The good news is this white glue dries clear. And so if there's some of it left, it should not really leave any unsightly marks. Or at least that's the intent of it. 
let's go ahead and uh, put some weight on this now and I'll turn this so you can kind of see it a little better. Okay, so here we go. So I have a couple gallons of water. I'm just gonna set them there on the fretboard. Like so. Make sure they're balanced, not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> you know something else I have here I might use? Yeah, I have a toolbox. That may work better right in the middle. And I'll put these uh, gallons of water on the ends. Okay, so now that those are seated, what I'm gonna do, Okay, now that those are balanced, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look here to make sure the fretboard is in fact flat, and it is. Double check the end pieces, make sure they're pushed in. That one is, and the end one here is pushed in tight now. All right, and the instructions, let's see, how long does it say to leave those together once you put them Yeah, the instructions say let it dry for, say, 30 to 45 minutes. I'll probably let this go plenty longer than that because I did put lots of glue on there. I want to make sure that uh, it has plenty of time to set up. As I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and look here and see if I can do any more of this uh, cleanup of the glue squeeze out. If I can reach. Mm -hmm. They actually recommend using like a uh, like paint cans, which may sit on here a little better than these uh, jugs of water. I just didn't happen to have any paint cans sitting around. The other thing you might be able to use is take uh, heavy books, like stacks of books, and set them on there to keep the keep it nice and flat. Okay, I think with those books, I have better symmetrical squeeze out now. Because on this side, closest to the camera, when I look at the squeeze out, I can see I was not getting squeeze out down here toward this end of it. And now it's a uniform squeeze out. So, now we basically just uh, sit and wait and um, let it dry thoroughly. And then we'll come back. And uh, the next thing is basically just to uh, string it up and put it together. So here you can see I've taken the weights that were on the box off and uh, you can see that even with our bands the box resonates actually pretty well. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take these rubber bands off the box. I'll let you see kind of the, the, the joint here. It's actually a nice tight joint. It's glued down all along the way. Although when I'm looking at this I can see when I did some of the wiping off of the, the squeeze out, that, uh, that glue now leaves like a bit of a flat um, sheen. Okay, so there we have it. <clears throat> we have the dulcimer box. All strung up there, or not all strung up, all, uh, all glued on. I'm not sure if you can see what I was talking about. There's a little bit of flat area there from where the glue was kind of wiped out. I'm gonna see if I can um, clean that up a bit. Also, you can see here that on the end of the box, it looks like I uh, had those pins or brads right up close to the edge of the box. I probably should have had that backed off a little bit, though I should be able to still get the strings over without, without any, any trouble. But uh, there we have the box. Let me go ahead and see if I can clean this up now a bit. I'm not sure if that'll work or not. Either way, it doesn't really stand out very much, but we'll give that a try.
Okay, I'm gonna try a little experiment here and see if I can get some of that glue off. So it may not work because it's been dried on there like overnight, but we'll give it a try. Okay, that looks like it did the trick. That area where I had this sort of uh, glue that was kind of squeezed out, I just took a damp washcloth to it and wiped it off and then came back with sort of the dry washcloth and wiped it again. And all that glue squeeze out or the residual um, that was kind of spread around is now gone. So we have a nice clean um, box now. And again, let's hear the box. Doesn't sound very resonant right now, but I think when the strings get on there, um, that will uh, change. <clears throat> so the next step in the process is to put on the saddle or bridge. I'm not sure exactly what they're calling it. And hopefully you can see this. I'll try to bring this in close here. So you see that this saddle, it has uh, like a sharp edge to it. I'm not sure if you can see that well. And you want to have this this point, the sharp edge, going toward the headstock. And the point of that is when the strings come off this, it'll have a clean, sharp break there. So we basically going to set this in here just like so. Again, if this is a little bit too uh, snug, or I should say if I have a hard time getting in, you could put it on some sandpaper and just sort of sand it down a little bit. This one here actually um, has uh, some wiggle room. It's, it's actually a little bit loose. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue because the, the, um, the strings are going to hold that in place anyway. But that's the next step and then put the strings on. So let me get the, the strings out and set up and we'll get the strung up. Alrighty, we're getting ready to uh, string this thing up now. The first thing you want to do is to take the tuning machines here and turn them so that the holes are visible going straight up and down. That's the first thing to do. Um, the next one to do is get your strings. And the strings will that come with the kit, uh, there will be three strings uh, for each of these slots. The, the melody string is a string that's going to be close to you. And that's going to be the thinnest string. So if I'm right-handed and I have the tuners here on my left, then this 0 .010 string, the high string, is going to be the melody string. And that will go closest to me. Uh, the next one is going to be the unwound string here. I'm not sure what gauge that is. Maybe it's a 14 or something. That will be the middle string. And the bass string will be this wound string. I don't know if you can see those. One of these looks sort of uh, bronze or coppery color. That's a uh, wound string, and that will be the bass string that goes the farthest away from you. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, the loop from these strings, and you're going to put the loop onto the brad on the end of the instrument. Let me get these undone here. All right, now that I have the strings unwound, uh, you can see that these strings, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but they have a loop on the end of them right here. And this loop is what's going to go um, on the brad. Let me go ahead and start off with the, the middle string. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So on the end of the box, there were these brads that we put in. Right. And so I basically just loop that loop over the brad and I bring this around. All right. Oops. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm basically going to bring this around, and I'm going to be going to the end one. The, the middle string will go to the end tuner. Um, the low string will go to this tuner, and the high string will go to this tuner closest to you. So I'm going to go ahead and put this through the hole. I'm going to come back up through. and then put it down through again. Okay, after a little bit of uh, um, aggravation there, I got that strung up. You wanna make sure that you, uh, you don't get your strings crossed as you're putting them in place there. So let me go ahead and uh, make sure this thing is aligned on the other end. And it looks like it is. And again, I'll keep tension on this as I wind it clockwise. All right, I'm checking the uh, end here to make sure I get the alignment the way I want it. Because this is relatively soft plastic, so once you start tightening this up, it's probably gonna cut into that plastic a bit. So make sure these things are all aligned. All right, those look all right. Look at the headstock. Okay, I already see something. If I were to do this again, I might modify this a bit. I'm not sure if you can see this. Looks like the strings are rubbing on the wood there a bit. If I were to do this again, I might have taken a file and sort of just uh, filed away a little bit of that edge to kind of keep the strings from cutting into the wood right there. So let me go ahead and um, tune this up and, uh, and we'll get the first uh, sound sample from it. I now have the instrument strung up and tuned up. And you can see here I have it tuned uh, D, A, and D. Let's go ahead and uh, give you some strums here. And again, these are two things that come with this kit. One of these is this pick, and it's labeled Backyard Music, which is the makers of this kit. And the other is this little dowel, and this dowel is used, it's called a noter, and it's used rather than pushing down with a finger, you can push down with this dowel in order to make, uh, make notes. So let's go ahead and just kind of go up and down this to see what it sounds like. You can see that quite surprisingly, even though it's a cardboard box, it actually rings out pretty well. All right, you can see now that this instrument is all put together, and I'll sort of bring it up here to give you a bit of a close-up there of it. There you go. And again, this is tuned up to D, A, D. And the two other things that come with this instrument, one is this pick from Backyard Music, and this little piece of dowel, which is referred to as a noter, which you can hold down to, to um, uh, make notes. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can play a little tune here.
Hopefully you recognize that as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <clears throat> so there you have it. This is the Backyard Music uh, Mountain Dulcimer Kit made from a cardboard box and this wooden neck. Um, it was not that challenging to build and it was certainly a lot of fun. Uh, you should give it a try. Now that you've seen how this is built, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and uh, play this for a few days. And this video will be followed up with a video where I do basically a review of this instrument and talk about uh, how easy or challenging it might be to learn my first tune on this, uh, on this dulcimer. Um, and in that video, the follow-up video to this one, I'll be giving the instructions on how to win this dulcimer in the giveaway that I'll be doing in collaboration with Mandy from Banjo Lemonade. And I should say that in addition to getting this, this instrument, uh, Mandy is gonna be throwing in a couple of lessons on how to play the dulcimer. So be looking for the next video, which is the giveaway video and review of this instrument. Thanks for watching.